Hey everyone, this video is about the legendary Casio FX603P from 1990, and the 603P is one of the most well-known and sought-after calculators amongst Casio calculator fans. Um, not only <clears throat> was it the successor to the venerable Casio 602P, uh, that was the competitor to the, to the HP 41C, but it's also exceedingly rare, having only been released in small numbers in Japan. And although the 603P wasn't a radical reinvention of the 602P, it was a significant upgrade, adding useful features such as fractions, uh, base end support and byte memory addressing. And it also improved uh, hardware in the form of a larger display, a faster processor with significantly more memory and an RS-232 port that supports loading and storing programs from a PC. And as we'll see, the 603P kept the simplicity of its predecessor, but it managed to improve on what was already a very powerful device. And so physically it's interesting to compare the 603P with its predecessor and it's obviously significantly bigger than the 602P and a similar size to HP's Pioneer series like the AR42S. In the late 80s, uh, Casio adopted uh, this darker aesthetic for its calculators and uh, the 603P's case is made from aluminium with a black coating and so it feels a lot more solid and also heavier than you might expect. Uh, Casio moved the physical on-off slider from the above the display uh, to the left side of the case. And the 603P has a two-row by 16-character display, which is both uh, 15, oh, five characters wiser and an extra row from the 602P. Uh, but the characters themselves are a lot smaller. Now, some may find them a little bit too small, but for me, they're fine. And it's interesting how the 603P uses its extra screen real estate, and we'll talk more about that later. Uh, there's also a contrast wheel on the side uh, to adjust the contrast of the display. And the keyboard, I believe, is a significant improvement over the 602P. Uh, the keys overall are larger, and I find them easier to press. Uh, the shift key and the mode key uh, have been extracted to an extra row at the top of the keyboard, and they now all have clear color coding, and this makes the keyboard a lot more logical. Uh, interestingly, the top keyboard row also includes uh, two reset buttons. On the left is the usual all reset, uh, and that clears memory and settings, but to its right, uh, there's a P button for a partial reset, and this reverts the calculator to the default settings, uh, but retains memory contents. And <clears throat> Casio also added a dedicated alpha key and a new green shift key on the 603P, and extracting uh, this row of modifier keys freed up extra space that's utilized by the new functions on the 603P. And overall, I really uh, prefer the layout of the keyboard. Uh, they also used high contrast colors, avoiding the mistake uh, Casio made with the 4500P, uh, which I have a separate video on. And <clears throat> the 603P has the same processor as the FX880P pocket computer, so it's a Hitachi HD62002 that runs at 1.22 megahertz, and it supports uh, 6,144 bytes of program memory, which is an order of magnitude more than the 602P, and this allows for 20 program spaces instead of 10. And all that RAM is really made more useful because of the 602 uh, 3P's I.O. capabilities. Uh, it uses the same I.O. port on its uh, top edge as later model pocket computers like the VX4 and the Z1GR, and there are third-party cables that allow it to be connected to a PC, and I'll include links uh, to these in the video descriptions. Uh, but these allow programs to be really easily backed up, which is really a big improvement over its predecessor, uh, on the 602P, it was technically possible to use the Kinset interface to store and retrieve programs as audio files on a PC, but that was certainly not as easy to use. And the basic usage of the 603P is similar to its predecessor. <clears throat> the calculator is highly modal, so to perform a calculation, 
uh, we select mode 1. And uh, here we can say calculate uh, 2 plus 3 times 4 uh, and then hit equals to see the result. And like the 602p, the 603p has a register model where only the current register value is displayed at one time. And for 1990, this may have seemed anachronistic to some because earlier in 1986, uh, Casio had introduced uh, the 4000p, uh, which displayed uh, full arithmetic expressions. Uh, and along with that change, it also induced, <clears throat> introduced a new basic light programming model which uh, perseveres uh, to this day. Uh, but the register model on the 603P really goes hand in hand with uh, being a keystroke programmable calculator. And the 603P uses the top line of the display to display its alpha register. Uh, so say we hit the alpha key and then uh, type some characters. Uh, these are displayed above, <clears throat> and this works really well for programs that use the alpha register to prompt for values. And by splitting the display of the alpha numeric registers, the 603P is similar to, uh, say, the Swiss Micros, uh, what they did in the DM41X. And there were really three key new features the 603P added to its uh, predecessor. And so one of these features is fractions, and they work the same way on many Casio calculators. So we can use the fraction key to say enter 2 and 2 thirds. Uh, and we can use uh, shift fraction to switch between uh, proper and improper fractions. And uh, so let's multiply that by, say, a half. Uh, and we can shift the result back to decimal by pressing the fraction button again. Uh, and the second new feature is uh, base end mode for performing calculations in binary, octal, and hex. And uh, we switch this using modes minus. Uh, and so by default we're in decimal, and so let's enter a number, let's say uh, that, and uh, we can hit hex to convert that to hexadecimal. Uh, and in hex we work with 32-bit numbers. And uh, so let's switch back to decimal now and enter minus 1. Uh, and we'll convert that to binary. And you can see that um, binary mode works uh, with 16-bit 2's complement. Uh, and in any base we can perform logical bitwise operations and or uh, exclusive or and negative. So uh, let's do x or that uh, with another binary number. And uh, so base in mode is fairly easy to use and quite useful if you're doing low-level programming. And the last uh, feature the 603P added is uh, byte memory addressing with uh, peak and poke instructions. And uh, this is a really interesting one. In the manual, um, its feature is introduced in the context of controlling peripherals like the uh, changing the RS232C uh, parameters. And so you can read and write directly to any byte in a uh, program or uh, memory space, as well as addresses that are used to control the program stack execution and even uh, display memory. And uh, this is really unusual on a calculator. Uh, peak and poke were more often implemented in pocket computers, and it's mostly a feature uh, that you can utilize from programs. So we'll talk about that now. And programming on the 603P works um, in a similar way to its predecessor. So uh, let's select uh, write mode 2 on both calculators. <clears throat> and we can see um, there are 20 programming spaces on the 603P versus only 10 on the 602P. <clears throat> and I've got a simple program entered um, into both calculators and P0. Uh, so let's select that. Uh, and we can... I uh, use the backspace uh, to view the source code. Uh, and so this is a simple program uh, that just prints out an incrementing counter. Uh, so it starts by uh, storing 0 into uh, the if memory location uh, and then uh, creates a string and substitutes an if, uh, increments if, and then loops back to the start of the loop. Uh, and so we can go back to write mode, uh, run mode 1, 
Uh, and if we run both at the same time, uh, we can see the 603p is uh, running a lot faster. Um, it's up to 100 uh, versus 30 on the 602p. <clears throat> and uh, the N Queen solution program uh, takes around 2 minutes 40 to run on the 602p. Uh, or 603p, which is about um, three times faster as its predecessor. And the next example is a simple demonstration of the Poe construction that's only available on 603p and so addresses uh, 1392 to uh, 1407 uh, um, correspond to the upper line of the display and uh, 1407 corresponds to the character on uh, the far right. Uh, and so this program uh, just turns on alpha mode uh, and then it uh, pokes um, the current x value into uh, that location uh, and then halts for input and then increments uh, the x register and loops back to the start. And so um, if we, we can enter a character code uh, and then we can hit uh, P4 to run the program. Uh, so you can see every time I hit the XE, a new character is written. And the last example is of a self-modifying program. <clears throat> and I believe this is the first self-modifying program I've demonstrated on any calculator. Um, a self-modifying program is one that overwrites its own program code during execution. And this one is a relatively simple example um, that updates um, an alpha string um, that's printed on the display. And so the way it works is it begins by uh, printing out the string plus uh, and then halting uh, and then uh, for input. And um, afterwards it uses locations 1, 2, 4, 6 and 1, 2, 4, 5 uh, to determine the address of the first byte uh, of the pro current program's body uh, and it adds uh, 2 to this uh, to get the address of uh, this character in memory. Uh, it then uh, peaks, it, it writes that to memory address 0 um, and then it, it, it goes in a loop, it peaks uh, the current character code at that address, adds 1 and pokes it back into uh, the same address uh, and then loops back to the start. Uh, and so let's select uh, mode 1 and then hit um, F5 uh, to run it. Uh, so every time I hit EXE, uh, we'll see the next character code uh, on the display. Uh, and interestingly, if we uh, select uh, P5 in write mode uh, and we look at the program now, Uh, you can actually see that that character code has been updated in the source. And having full memory access um, makes it possible to do a lot of interesting programming techniques. Um, you can modify the program counter to simulate um, go-tos without an explicit go-to instruction, and you can change the way uh, label lookups work. And it also makes experimenting with synthetic programming on the 603p a lot of easier than the 602p. And I'll include a link in the uh, video notes to a Russian site that has some interesting examples of these techniques. And so in summary, the 603p was really a significant improvement over the classic 602p and its programmability and I.O. were comparable to the HP 41ZX um, and the TI-95 ProCalc, all of which were arguably more computers than calculators. And the 603p was the last of a lineage of keystroke programmable devices that also included the 201p, uh, the 501p, and the 601p. And in retrospect, it's interesting that Casio uh, only seemed to release this device in Japan, and my guess was that it was a commercial decision based on the demand uh, for a 602p successor in Japan. 
uh, but its desirability for a collector is only enhanced by its rarity and it's not that surprising to see the high prices that uh, it still fetches now on Japanese uh, auction sites like Yahoo Auctions and it's really the king of uh, Casio's keystroke programmable calculators. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful and if you have please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted of new videos.